This campaign is called Kalisto, and it takes place at a mountain called Hilmos in southern Greece, in the Peloponnese. It's located at an altitude of almost 2,500 meters. And its goal is to understand how particles that come from all over Europe and Africa and the Mediterranean affect clouds that are formed on the mountain. If we stay there long enough, we can actually sample almost any type of particle that exists all over the world and see how they affect clouds. What do we mean by particles? These are tiny, tiny little pieces of matter that are much smaller than we can see, smaller than the thickness of your hair. Now, even though they're very small, they have huge impacts because every cloud droplet and ice crystal that we find in clouds forms upon these particles. Now, without particles, actually, we wouldn't almost have any clouds in the atmosphere. So they're really important. Now, what we care about is how different types of particles actually affect cloud properties. Basically, the atmosphere is stratified into two main layers. One that is the mixing layers with all the pollution from uh, the bottom atmosphere and from the cities and from human activities. And one on top that is like very clean, which we call the free troposphere. And uh, that has much lower aerosol load. And depending, depending on the time of the day and the, on the solar radiation and on the heat transfer, these layers are moving up and down. And so this site we have in Greece in, at the Mount Helmos allows us to sample aerosols from both layers and to see how these different particle loads influence cloud formation. Clouds are in a critical component of the climate system. They are responsible for transporting water from the equator to the poles. They're responsible for precipitation, so water supply, the hydrological cycle. Clouds are also really important for regulating how much energy comes from the sun into the actual Earth. Much of the sunlight gets reflected back to space and does not warm climate. Understanding what controls cloud properties, how much of them we have around, how frequently they rain, is really critical. And that's what climate models need to include to have good predictions of climate and climate change.